Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn that a word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith and not of works, lest anyone should boast. It is given freely as a gift to all who obey him. And if we do not obey, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints that are watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and get right to it, try to shoot right through this. It's Joshua chapter, what did where we leave off? We left off chapter 7. It's Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. It's Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. Last week we left off. We know that we went in and we tried to uh, we tried to take the land of Ai. You know what I'm saying? When we tried to take that land, we got our people ran off. Joshua started falling to the ground crying. But Joshua was like, like... Lord, why you, you know what I'm saying? Why you, why you let these people take us over like that? We turned our back to the fight. You know what I'm saying? We ran away from the fight. Joshua worried that, I mean, Lord, if the Canaanites hear that we ran from them, that's going to give them encouragement. The Canaanites going to mess around and all surround us because they outnumber us, and they going to know that they can whoop our butts. So they had nervy. He thought, he was like, God, why you turn your back on us now? You know what I'm saying? We in the thick of things. We already here. We need your help now. You told us that wait, you ain't gonna leave us or forsake us, right? What the most high God said? He said, get your butt up off of the ground. Ain't nobody trying to listen to you cry. Right? Get your butt up off of the ground. He said there's sin in the camp. Right? So you remember we cast lots to try to figure out who sinned it against the most God. We found out that uh Achan took the accursed thing. Right? And after that, we ended up putting him and his family to death by stoning. So that was the most high God's way of showing that this is how serious he takes it. Right? Right after this, we're going to start off in chapter 8, verse 1. He's going to send us right back into AI and watch how this thing play out this time. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee and arise. Go uh -huh. to AI. See, I have given it into thy hand, the king of AI and his people and his city and his land. See, this is the part where a Christian pastor, a Christian pastor, they, you know what I'm saying, they'll, they'll take this thing and they'll restructure it for your life. You know how a Christian pastor do it. A Christian pastor, he'd take this and they'd be like, you know what? AI is given into the hand of the Israelites. You know what he's going to do? He'd be like, God is giving you something in your hand. Right? That job. That new car. That new house. God is giving it into your hand, but you too scared to go. That's how Christian pastors do it. Right? Now, you can do that in real life. Right? A person who look at the, uh, look at the book and study it, you can do that in real life. But you can't do it about no car. Can't do it about what's gonna happen to a car after you die? Forget after you die. What's gonna happen to the car in five or six years? What's gonna happen to your house after about 30 years? That thing gonna be broke down, outdated, you're gonna be making repairs on it. You know what you're gonna wanna do? Sell it. Get up out of there. Right? All this stuff perishes. It's, 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 it goes away. But it's one thing. That God gave into your hand that don't go away. And that's eternity. He gave it to you. He put it right there for you. You know the only thing we got to do is close our hand and do it. And you know how you close your hand in this metaphorical sense? Just obey the man. That's what we look for. That's when we come here. We look for the examples. We try to figure it out. How do we obey God? Who's teaching us to obey God? There's a lot of people teaching us. Yeah, God wants you to forgive. Oh, God, grace is on your life. Don't be too hard on yourself. Right? You forgive everybody else, but you just don't forgive. You. All this crazy stuff that these people be coming up with. How you forgive everybody else, but don't forgive yourself? When, when have you ever seen it in the book? Find me a Bible verse that says you must forgive yourself. You'll never find it. But these people will make that type of stuff a requirement for us. Because we don't know our history. We don't know the character of God. That's why we start off. We went through Genesis all the way to Deuteronomy. 
right? And now we're picking up in the book of Joshua. Because through this, we learn the character of God. We learn who God really is. How has God always dealt with his people? That way when we get to the New Testament, it makes sense. We look at it, we know when he say, love thy neighbor as yourself, that ain't like, ooh, Jesus came up with something really nice. We can look at that and be like, you know what? The law told us that first in the book of Leviticus. This is who God has always been. People hear that and they look, ooh, that's a new thing. That's who God has always been. Let me explain something else to you about who he's always been. Right? So he sent the people to Ai. Let's hear about it. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou did to Jericho and her king. Right? So you remember what happened to Jericho. Jericho, all the walls came down. Came down. We went into Jericho. We got all the people. Chopped their darn necks off. Chopped their darn heads off. These people ain't ready. These Christian pastors ain't going to tell you about us. We was Hebrew. We wasn't no soft people. We would walk in there and chop your darn head off. And we would do it at the command of the Most High God. That's God's character. His character was violence. It was judgment. So what does that mean for us today? Does that mean, you know what I'm saying, when these white folks get to shooting our kids and all that, that we go chop their heads off? No. Did it come at the command of the Most High God? No. Most High God told us this is exactly what was going to happen since we disobeyed him. So now when we walking around with picket signs saying, you know what I'm saying, give us justice. Black lives matter. That's fine. I'm not against it. Right? I'm not against it. Y'all choose to do y'all picket sign, y'all do it. But have the context. Know that we're in this situation, not because the white man is so powerful and evil. We're in this situation because the Most High God put curses on us if we did not obey his word. So what's the real solution? Tell them that they evil. Tell them that they wrong. Tell them that they unjust. And at the same time, obey God's word. That's judgment for us. Right? We put ourselves in a position where it's okay for us to judge because we're doing the right thing. So we can tell the, the other man that is a speck in his eye that at the same time, we obeying God, so we, we're, we're pleasing in his sight. Keep going. Let's see what you're talking about. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou did to Jericho and her king. Uh -huh. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. Uh-huh. So Joshua rose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. Uh -huh. And Joshua chose out 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. How many, how many did he chose out the first time they went? 3,000. Remember last chapter, he chose out 3,000 people. He said, you know what, let me not play with these people now. He said, go ahead and give me 30,000. <laughs> right? Go ahead and give me 30,000. I mean, let's just see what we can do with 30,000. He took the whole 30,000. Joshua had a plan this time. Now watch this. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. Uh -huh. And Joshua chose out 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. Uh -huh. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in wait against the city, even behind the city. Go not very far from the city, but be ye all ready. Uh -huh. And I and all the people that are with me will approach unto the city and shall come to pass when they come out against us at the first that we will flee from before them, for they will come out after us till uh -huh. we have drawn them from the city. For they will say, they flee before us as at the first. Therefore, we will flee before them. Uh-huh. Then ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city. For the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. All right? So Joshua came up with a plan to ambush. He said, look, we're going to take more soldiers. We're going to have this portion of the soldiers go hide out. Right? Then we're going to take the rest of our soldiers and take them head on just like we did before. When we rush them, they're going to look at us and they're going to be like, okay, let's have it. They're going to come at us. We're going to turn and run just like we did before. They're going to think we ran like the last time. They're going to chase us. When they chase us, then we're going to send our guys that was hiding out into their camp, take over their whole place. So it was a good plan, right? They're going to ambush them. They tricked them, right? They're setting them up. Let's see. Let's keep going. Then ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. Uh -huh. And it shall be when ye have taken the city that ye shall set the city on fire, According to the commandment of the Lord, shall ye do. You gonna set the city where? On fire. Okay. See, I have commanded you. Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush in above in abode between Bethel and Ai uh -huh. on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged at night among the people. Okay. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and numbered the people. Okay. And went up. He and his, he and the elders of Israel before the people of Ai. 
And all the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up and drew nigh and came before the city and pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. Mm -hmm. And he took about 5,000 men and set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, even all the host that was on the north of the city, and their, and their liars in wait on the west side of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. Uh -huh. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw it, that they hastened and rose up early, and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle. Watch the king of Ai. He just, he just fell. It looked like he just fell right into the trap. King of Ai just fell right into it. They probably looking at him like, you idiot. You just, you fell right for it. Let's see. There's a reason why it looked like that. He and all his people, at a time appointed before the plain, but he wished not that there was liars in ambush against him behind the city. Uh huh. And Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. They tricked them. Right? They set them up. Let's see. Keep going. And all the people that were in Ai were called together to pursue after them. Uh huh. They pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. Mm hmm. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not out after Israel. And they left the city open and pursued after Israel. Uh huh. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Joshua stretch, out, <coughs> excuse me, stretch out the spear that is in thy hand toward Ai. Uh huh. For I will give it into, into your hand. Uh huh. And Joshua stretched, Joshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city. Uh huh. And the ambush arose quickly out of their place. Uh huh. And they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand. Soon as they entered into the city, wait, soon as he had stretched out his hand, and they entered into the city and took it and hastened to set the city on fire. They set that thing on fire. Keep going. Watch this. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascend up to heaven. Uh -huh. And they had no power to flee this way or that way. So now they already out. They chased all the other ones thinking that they running from them. King Ai said, yeah, let's get they butts. Looked like he just fell right from Zakah. Hut. King Ai going to chase the people, right? They looking for him. Okay, like, okay, what's happening? Right? Then they turn around, they see their whole city on fire. Just up in smoke. What you think they're gonna do at that point? What you gonna do? Right? Let's see. And the people that fled to the wilderness turned back upon the pursuers. And when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, uh -huh. then they turned again and slew the men of Ai. Uh -huh. And the other issue, and the other issued out of the city against them. Mm -hmm. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them so that they let none of them remain or escape. Uh -huh. And the king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness, wherein they chased them, and when they were all fallen on the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned to Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. Mm -hmm. And so it was that all that fell that day, both of men and women, were 12,000. How many? 12,000. All that fell that day were how many? 12,000. Oh, it's a reason for it. It's a reason for it. The whole book testified who? Yahushua. Okay, let's see if we can make sense of this thing then. All right, so all that fell that day were 12,000. Mm -hmm. Even all the men of Ai. Okay. For Joshua drew not his hand back wherewith he stretched out his spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Okay. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey unto themselves according unto the word of the Lord which he commanded Joshua. Right? So you remember this time, remember when it was Jericho, he said, y'all, excuse me, y'all can't take nothing. This time he said, go ahead and spoil the city. Take whatever you have. It's a reason for it. All this is a reason for it. How many, how many people slew that day? 12,000. 12,000. Okay, let's see. And Joshua burned Ai and made it a heap forever. Made it a heap forever, but what else happened? Even a desolation unto this day. Uh-huh. And the king of Ai. And the king of Ai. He hanged on a tree until eventide. He did what to him? Hanged on a tree until eventide. Give me what we got. Give me, uh, give me, uh, give me, uh, Mar uh give me Mark chapter 14. That's right, go downstairs. No, go downstairs. This is Mark chapter 14. 
Verse 42. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayed Who is talking right now? It's Yahushua talking. Yahushua said, rise up. Let us go, right? And immediately while he yet spake, cometh Judah, one of the twelve. Who? One of the twelve, Judah. And what did Judah come to do? And with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Sound like an ambush. Right? Let's see. Keep going. And he, he that betrayed him had given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. Look, y'all sure got ambushed and tricked, too. He got set up, too. Just like the king of Ai. What do you think the king of Ai was testifying of? Keep going. Watch this. And as soon as he was come, he goes straight away to him and says, Master, Hush. Master, come here. And kissed him. And they, led their, and they laid their hands on him and took him. Uh huh. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Uh oh. So now they fighting. How many disciples was it? Twelve. Why do you think 12,000 had to die? When Joshua took Ai, why do you think 12,000 had to die? Because you know what? When they took Yahushua, 12 disciples had to scatter. Right? 12 disciples had to scatter. That means 12,000 had to die that day. But they took Yahushua alive, just like they took the king of Ai alive. Let's go back to Joshua and let's see how they ended up dealing with the king of Ai. Because, I mean, I can't, I just couldn't believe that he would be hanging on the tree until eventide. When did Yahushua, what, I mean, did, did Yahushua hang on the tree? Absolutely. Okay, and when did they take him down? Even. Took him down right at even. So when we look into when we look into the book of Joshua, what do you think we read? We think we're reading about the king of Ai. Why do you think? Okay, let, let, I mean, let's just when it came to Jericho, we couldn't take none of the spoils. Everything in there, if it was gold, it had to be cleansed and it was dedicated to the temple. We couldn't keep it, right? Or everything else had to die or be burned. Okay, it makes sense. All of a sudden, when we go to Ai, take everything. All the spoils is ours. Why would it be ours in this situation? Because the king of Ai had to die for us. King, the king of Ai had to die on the cross for us. What do you think? What do you think the king of Ai testified of? We can keep the spoils. He died. Twelve thousand of his men died, and he hung hang on the tree until even time. The whole book testified the Messiah. Why do you think the Messiah had to be set up? He had to be ambushed. That's why they had to just pop up on them with, with, with swords and staves. Why should it keep going? And the king of Ai. What verse we on? 29. This is uh, Joshua chapter 8, verse 29. Watch this. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide, as soon as the sun was down. As soon as what? The sun was down. Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree. Help my memory a little bit. When, when Yahushua was hanging, he hung, and then... If I'm not mistaken, everything became dark, right? And then after everything became dark, they said, oh, we got to get him down because what is about to come? The Passover. They had to get it, but down. The next day it was about to come. It was even time. Sunset. They had to take his carcass and get him off of the tree. Matter of fact, they stabbed the man in the side to try to make it go quicker. We ain't hanging on the tree. You can support yourself with the leg. They about to come and break his leg. They like, man, that man ain't dying. Let's break his leg to make it where he can't support himself no more. When they about to do it, though, they're like, you know what? He already dead. They got his butt right on down. These people ain't teaching no book. We have to teach the book. We have to look at the history. How, how, how do you think you know anything about the Messiah and you don't know his history? You don't know everything in the book that tests about. He says, search the scripture because in them you think you have eternal life. And he said, the whole time is testifying of me. Keep going. And Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the entering of the gate of the city. And I wonder what they're going to do. At the entering of the gate of the city. And I wonder what they're going to do next. And raise thereon a great heap of stones that remains unto this day. What'd they do when Yahushua got put in this tomb? What'd they put over it? A stone. They rolled a big stone over it. The whole book testified to Messiah. 
That's why, that's why it's important that we sit down and we pay attention. Otherwise, we'll miss this. We'll miss what the, what the Messiah is trying to show us. We'll miss the mysteries that's in his word. We'll miss the character of the Most High God. Keep going. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. Mm -hmm. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses. Okay. An altar of whole stones, over which no man has lift up any iron. Mm -hmm. And they offered thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. Okay. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. Okay. And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on the side of the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well the stranger as he that was born among them. Okay. Half of them over against the Mount Gerizim and half of them over against Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. That's right. And afterward, he read all the words of the law. He said he read all the words of the law. That's our law. He read all the words of our law, and we had to learn it. And we had to teach it. Keep going. The blessings and cursings. The blessings and the cursings. According to all that is written in the book of the law. Okay. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel. Whole book got read. With the women and the little ones and the strangers that were on, on conversant among them. That he read the whole thing. Book. We get to read a few verses out of a few books. And people know I'm falling asleep, those and all. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I just, you know what I mean? Long, he, wrote, he read the whole book. He said he didn't leave nothing out. He didn't leave nothing out. You know what our, pe our people was in the play? We was excited to hear. They probably stood up the whole time to listen to it. We just got to get our minds back there. We're learning about the Most High God is a priority for us. You know what I'm saying? We don't put nothing. That's why I appreciate the people that tune in. I appreciate the people that, that show up. You know what I'm saying? When they do show up. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's important for It shouldn't be nothing that come before learning about the Most High God. I appreciate the people that, you know what I'm saying, that call us on, on days outside of the Fridays that we do these studies. They'll be looking like, you know what I'm saying, can you help me out with this and help me out with that? Because that's what it's about. How are you going to learn anything? How are you going to figure out anything in your life when you ain't figured out your soul? What good is it? What good is it to figure out, you know what, I finally learned how to handle my finances and how to fix my credit. What good is it if you haven't learned how to fix your soul? I mean, I finally learned how to excel at my job. What good is it if you haven't fixed your soul? I finally learned how to really, really raise my kids the right way. Okay, that's great. What good is it if you haven't fixed your own soul? Right? It's important for us. All this stuff is deeper for us. Everything that we deal with is, everything is a, it, uh, it sets, itself, sets itself up as a distraction for us, potentially. So we have to be, put ourselves in a position where we learn about the Most High God, learn about ourselves, and then we continue to walk in it. What verse are we on? Uh, the end of the chapter. All right, what chapter are we on now then? Nine. This chapter nine. It's Joshua chapter nine, verse one. Let's keep going. Let's try to shoot through this. And it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan, the hills and the valleys, and all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, uh -huh. the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite heard thereof, mm -hmm. that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. Okay. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and the Ai, okay. they did work willy, willily and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their donkeys and wine bottles, old and rent and bound up. So pay attention to what just happened. At first, they was about to fight. Right? The people of Gibeon, they was about to fight. They said, okay, well, let's get it. But then they heard about what happened at Jericho, and they heard about what happened at Ai. That changed things a little bit. So after that, what the book said they did? They gathered themselves together. Oh, wait. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their donkeys and wine bottles, old and rent, and bound up. Right? So in other words, they took some old sacks, right? And they, they, and they took some old stuff and put it up on their donkeys, and they made it look like they came from a long way. It's going to tell you. Watch this. And old shoes and clotted, up, and clotted upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and the 
and the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. Right, they took old beat up clothes. They even had the nerve to take some old beat up, dry, molded bread. Right? So they dressed up as if they came from a far distance. They just uh, dressed up like, I mean, this is just like a, this is just like a, I mean, this is a hard thing that they going through. I mean, we came from a far place. Watch, the book gonna tell you, watch this. Because in our law, we could offer someone from a faraway land peace. Hold on, grab, grab uh, what is it, Deuteronomy 20? 20, 20, yeah. The Deuteronomy chapter 20, give me verse, uh, give me verse uh, 10. It's Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 10. This is a man who know the law. So if we look at it, so if we look at it, we're like, you know what? That makes sense. Why they would dress up that way. The man just told y'all because our law told us that that's how we do it. You know what? It's a lot of, I was, I was, I was in the middle of writing the post. It's a, it's a gentleman. I like the brother too. You know what I'm saying? He a Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, he posted, he is like, uh, what did he say? He said something stupid. I like the brother though, but he said something stupid. He said, uh, he said, if if y'all Hebrews think it's okay, y'all Hebrews and Christians think it's okay for Israelites to mix with other people, in other words, to you know, like marrying their kids with Gentiles and all that, then um why do y'all what did he say? It was something silly. Like, why do y'all have a problem with uh Oh, I wish I could remember. It was it was some it was something super lame and illogical. But he was like, "Why do y'all have a problem with like some stupid, right?" And so I was halfway in the middle of like typing my response to him, and I was gonna break up this verse. But then in the middle, I was just like, "You know what? I ain't why I even bother. You know what I'm saying? Why I even darn bother? If he got a question, he can ask it. You know what I'm saying? It's just we just gotta get in a position when we start spending our time and our energy and people who really want to know the truth." People who got their mind made up and they trying to be provocative on Facebook and social media, let them be provocative. Let them do what they do. But when it comes to when it comes to people who who are who are vulnerable and they open themselves up and just like you know, honestly, I don't know and I want to know. That's the ones that we're looking for. That's the ones who y'all should have dealt with. You know what I'm saying? You notice when the Pharisees came to him, the ones who just thought they knew and they questioning them and and trying to be provocative towards them. He just gave them that same energy back. But for the other one, just like, hey, Lord, what do I do? What commandments do I need to keep to make it into a kingdom? He came with them. He just gave it to them. He taught those people. And that's how we got to be, too. You know what I'm saying? The ones that's willing to learn, let's teach them. The rest of these folks, man, I can't, I can't kill too much time on these people. Let's hear about it. Let's see what we're talking about. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 10. When thou comes nigh unto a city to fight against it, uh -huh. then proclaim peace unto it. So he said, when you come nigh unto a city to, to fight against it, proclaim peace unto that city. Right? Let's hear about the peace that we're going we gonna to put on that city. And it shall be, if it make the answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee. Everybody in that, that land, if they decide to make peace with you, they're going to be tributaries. In other words, they're going to be servants, slaves. And they shall serve thee. Uh-huh. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord thy God has delivered it unto thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. Okay. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy God has given thee. Right? So if you find a city, and you make peace with it, and they make peace with you, good. Now they your service. You, you run them. You rule those people. Right? But if they don't make peace, then you go ahead and go to war with them. And you kill all the males. But the women and the children you spare. And they become your servants. Right? But you also got to take care of them. Right? Keep going. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations. He said, thus, the, everything that he just said, that applies to all the cities that are what? That are very far off from thee. Which and are, what, are not what? Which are not of the cities of these nations. So he's saying the cities of these nations, talking about the Canaanites, if you're a Canaanite, this don't apply. So the people that we're dealing with right now, let's go back to Joshua. Joshua chapter 9, the people that we're dealing with are Gibeonites, who are Canaanites. Right? They're Hivites. So they're of these nations. 
But remember, they dressed themselves up. They put on garments as if they came from a faraway place. Let's see what they're going to try to do. This is Joshua what? Joshua chapter 9, verse what? Uh, five. Verse 5. This is Joshua chapter 9, verse 5. What did the book say? They dressed up. They put on their garments, the beat-up shoes. They got beat-up old molded bread. They walking. Now watch what Joshua chapter 9, verse 5 got to say. In old shoes and clotted. And old shoes and clotted upon their feet, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. We'll start at four. And they went to Joshua into the camp at Gilgal, and said unto him, and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country, now therefore make ye a league with us. He said, we came from a what country? Far country. And our law just told us, if you deal with a country that's far away, make peace with them. If they make peace with you, then they are your servants. So look what they came to do. He said, make a, an agreement, a league with them. Make an agreement with us. In other words, make peace with us. Let's hear about it. Now I wonder what they're going to offer as part of their terms of peace. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? Uh huh. And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. We are thy what? Servants. I mean, it just so happens, according to our law, if you make peace with us, you have to be our servant. So, how do you think we, I mean, these people came to us with molded bread, beat up shoes, clothes all worn. And they said, Hey, we came from a faraway place. In reality, they came from right around the corner. But as far as we know, they came from a faraway place. So you know what we said? Sounds good to me. Let's see. And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are you? And where do you come from? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. He said, We came from a very, very far country. And the reason why we came there is because of the name of the Lord thy God. Let's hear about it. For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to all king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Okay. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. Okay. This our bread we took hot for our provision and of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. Mm -hmm. But now behold, it is dry and it is moldy. Mm -hmm. And these bottles of wine which ye we filled were new. And behold, they be rent. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. Mm -hmm. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them. He so made what with them? A league with them. No, before that, we made what? Made peace with them. He made peace with them. According to our law, they came from a faraway place, so he made peace with them. In making peace, they had to be our servants. Well, that was part of their original offer. They said, we will be thy servants. So for us, this plays right in. But you notice the book say it, they didn't seek counsel from the Lord. So they didn't get to find out from the Most High God. These folks ain't from a faraway place. They're from right around the way. These are the Canaanites. These are the people I told you to destroy and not to make peace with them. Right? So they tricked us. But look how they did it. They did it using our law. You know what they would have had to do to you do that? During, uh, you know what their mindset would have to be? They would have to believe it. They believed it to the point where, you know what? I'm going to present myself as something that is pleasing to these people. In order to obtain salvation. That's the same thing we do. Right? When the Most High God see us, he see filthy rags. Right? He see filthy rags. He don't see nothing else. He don't see nothing pleasing. He don't see nothing that he want to deal with. Ephesians chapter 2 for me. This is Ephesians chapter 2. Give me verse 11. It's the same thing. It's like you going to hell. It's like... When I see you, you going to hell. You dying. Right? I'll be your servant. Make a league with me. This is why we serve the Messiah. 
Alright? This is why we serve the Messiah. We bring ourselves to a place of servitude for the Messiah because we're trying to make peace. We're trying to let them know, I come from a faraway country. Right? We serve the Most High God so that he'll forgive us. And the way that we forgive him, we dress ourselves up. We put on garments. We put on shoes. We carry bread. All in the hopes that we'll look like his son. Right? This is Ephesians chapter 2. If we came looking, to, if we came looking the way that we look, you know what I'm saying, just looking normal, most I got to look at us and be like, man, you better turn your butt around. Kill that come as you are stuff. Yeah, come as you are, please. You come as you are if you want to. Your butt going to stay right darn there. This is, a, this is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called on circumcision by that which is called circumcision in, in the flesh made by hand. Uh-huh. That at that time you were without the Messiah being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. Okay. Having no hope and without God in the world. Okay. But now in the Messiah, Yahushua, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of the Messiah. Okay. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Uh-huh. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinance, for to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Uh huh. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enemy thereby. Uh huh. And came and preached peace to you that which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Mm hmm. For those. Peace to those what? Afar off. And then who else? And them that were nigh. Where do you think all this is coming from? You, you don't even pick up on this language until you know our law. We just read and all we think it's just, oh, yeah, Paul just talking about, you know, making peace and all this. No, he's talking about our law. He's making peace to those that are far off. And just like the Gibeonites tricked us, we have to trick the Father so that even though we are nigh, he's making peace with us. Keep going. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Uh-huh. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Just like, just like the Gibeonites, they came, right? And now they're no longer, they, they accepted them in, we made a league with them. They're no, no more foreigners. Now they're fellow citizens with all the Israelites. Keep going. Yahshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone. Uh-huh. In whom are all the building fill, fill, fitly framed together, groweth unto a holy temp temple mm -hmm. in the Lord. In whom you also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Grab, uh, grab Genesis chapter uh, 27. This is Genesis chapter 27. We can uh, jump down to about verse 6. Right? It's important that we are understanding exactly what's happening. The context and what we get it from. All right? You have Joshua going into this land. He takes over the land of Ai. Word gets around to the people. The Gibeon, you know what I'm saying? These Hivites, they looking like, you know what? This is not going to work for us. We're not going to win. We already know. What can we do? I heard something is in their law, guys. If we come from a faraway nation... They're not going to kill us off like they're killing off all the rest of the Canaanites, all our brethren. So let's pretend like we came from far away. They dress up. They look the part. They put on something that would be pleasing to the people. Right? They put on, they present themselves as something that can be saved, salvaged. That's what we have to do. It's not the first time. Right? All of this stuff testifies to the Messiah. Right? Let's look at Genesis chapter 27. It's verse 6. And, Re and Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. Right? So this is Jacob and Esau, talking about Jacob and Esau. So now this is, this is Rebekah talking to J uh, Jacob, right? And Esau had just been told, listen, go give me some venison by Isaac. 
So the father asked the son to go get him some meat. And if he brought him the meat, he would give him a blessing. So the other son, who didn't get told to, that he was about to get a blessing, was told by his mom, you know what, this is what you should do. Keep going. Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go down to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father such as he loves. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. Mm -hmm. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man. And I am a smooth man. Mm -hmm. My father perhaps will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. All right? So he looked, and he knew Jacob was smart enough to know, listen, I don't look like Esau. I don't feel like Esau. I don't smell like Esau, my brother. My father would be pleased with my brother, but I'm not my brother. How am I going to get past? He told his mom, I don't know if this is going to work. I'll mess around and bring a curse on me. Watch what mom and her wisdom said. And his mother and his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Upon who? Upon me be thy curse. Mm. Just like Yahushua. Yahushua took our curses and put it on him. He said, Upon me be the curse. What do you think this testify of? Watch what else. Keep going. Only obey my voice and go fetch me then. Uh-huh. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meats such as his father loved. He obeyed, he obeyed his mom's voice. Okay, keep going. And Rebecca took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were in her, which were with her in the house, uh -huh. and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. Okay. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. So now she covered him with animal skin to make him appear as if he's Esau. All right, keep going. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which he, which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? Uh-huh. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. But he wasn't Esau. He was Jacob. But Jacob dressed himself as Esau, went to the father and said, I am your son, the one that you are pleased with. His father had been dim. You know what I'm saying? His eyes were dim, so he couldn't see well. He was old. He felt around and he was like, oh, well, you feel hairy. Because his mom told him he put on he put on skins of animals so that he'll feel hairy like his brother. And they got one over on his dad, and the dad ended up blessing him. But at the end of the day, he had to put on the son. That's the same thing that we do. We have to put on the Messiah. We have to dress ourselves in the Messiah. That's why we have to walk as the Messiah walks. That's why we have to live as the Messiah lives. Otherwise, we won't show ourselves as pleasing to the Father. When the Father look at us, he's going to be looking like, man, turn yourself around. When the Father look at us, he has to see the Messiah. He has to see the Son. Otherwise, we're not pleasing to him. That's how all this plays out. When Yahushua died on the cross for our sins, he did that to cover us in what? Blood. Why does he need to cover us in his blood? We, gotta be like him. we have to be like him. Otherwise, we're not pleasing to the, to the Father. The whole book testified of Right? We're just like the Hivites that pretended to come from a faraway country. We had to dress ourselves and put on the Messiah. Give me an idea. Huh? Give me an idea. Yeah, but the Hivites, though. <clears throat> right? It'll say it soon. But uh, go to. Uh, hold on, give me a second. Go to. What are you thinking of Hebrew? No, I just don't remember what he said put on Christ. Oh, uh, give me Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. It's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. And the word is here for him. It is so rich and powerful and there's so much in it. And we can just sit here and learn from it all day. The word is here. All it takes is a little bit of time, a little bit of dedication to look into it. Move slow. We don't have to move so fast. We don't have to pretend like we know everything. 
Just take your time and learn and don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to say you don't know. Don't be afraid to figure out the answer. Don't be afraid to push through it. I know it could be boring sometimes reading the book or even listening to the book. I know some of that, so I know you can start dozing off and go through all that. Push through all that stuff and let it get into your soul. Let it reach you. All this other stuff is just distracting, blocking it. You got things popping up and things happening. Don't let nothing distract you. Kids running around. Don't let the kids run around and distract you. Whoop their butt a couple times. Tell them to sit their butt down. If that don't work, let their butt run around. You hear the word. Right? Keep going. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Uh huh. And walk in love as the Messiah also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Uh huh. But fornication and all uncleanness of covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Uh huh. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of the Messiah and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no man deceive you with vain words. None of this stuff is getting into the kingdom. Keep going. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon children of disobedience. When you hear wrath, what do you know? Anger. The man is mad at you. Don't let these people lie to you and talking about, you know, God loves everybody. You know, these... The Philip and Terrence, they preach as if God is mad at you. Darn right. I'm preaching as if the wrath of God is coming. How you gonna have wrath and you happy? Of course he's mad. Of course he's angry. You better prepare yourself. He said, for these reasons, the wrath of God is coming. It happens to be all the reason that these people say, you know what, you don't necessarily have to completely stop. I mean, just give a good effort and stop it. Nobody is gonna completely stop, though. Yeah, okay. Well, these are the reasons why the Most High God is upset. Keep going. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Okay. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Uh -huh. Walk as children of light. Okay. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth. Okay. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Give me Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. It's important that we know. We have to know what's not going to make it. What's the stuff that's going to just be a dead ringer that, nah, you ain't the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? You don't look like Yahushua. You keep sinning, it's going to make it obvious. When the Father see you, he's going to smell you from a mile away. Like, well, you stink in my nostrils. Get your butt out of here. Rejoice in the that's Lord. why he's going to say, I never knew you. Right? He said, depart from me because I never knew you. I know my son. I never knew your butt. Um, I have talked to, I talked to some Christians. I'm like, ah, oh, that verse scares me. I don't know why you would let him in because they said you could talk to him. They called the Lord and everything. Mm -hmm. and I was like, it was, uh, the reason was right there. Clear as day. Because of sin. And you know what's so sad? Because we've been taught that sin is like, you know, it's impossible to stop sinning. It's been, it's been just, I mean, just nailed to our darn brain that when we read the obvious right there, it has no effect on us. Even though I sit there and tell you, because they didn't stop sinning, the Most High God said, I never knew you. Even though I say that very clearly, right? We read it and it's like, hmm, I don't know why. I can't, I can't imagine why. Because when we said did not stop, it's a, it's a uh, because they uh, wouldn't stop iniquity. When we read that, it's like, well, that, of course they wouldn't. In our minds, like, of course they wouldn't. So it's impossible to stop. So that can't be the reason in our mind. Because everybody knows it's impossible to stop iniquity. But God's never told us that. Our pastor told us that. Our moms, our dads, our grandmas, told, everybody told us that. God's never wrote that in his book. You've never read that in the book. That's why we gotta clean this stuff up. It's impossible to. It's, I'll tell you what's impossible. It's impossible to make it into the kingdom, and you don't understand this word. So you don't understand this message. When they would say, uh, "I can do all things through Christ," you know what I'm saying. What they mean by that, T? I'm just saying. I'm just, at, I'm just trying to figure out. I'm just trying to. If, if you can do all things in Christ, I mean, why can't you stop sinning? Right. 
So why is that not the first thing? I mean, if I can do all things in Christ, and you know everybody walking around saying it's impossible to do one thing, right? It's impossible to do one thing. Stop sin. I mean, wouldn't it just be, I mean, wouldn't that be the thing that brings God the most glory? Yeah, I mean, if, like, you saying that your God can't stop you from sin, or can't help you stop sin. But you can do all things in Christ, except stop sin. Yeah, that's crazy. Sound like a weak God. But that's how they view the man. They view him like he's weak. Like he can be tricked. Like you can just get over on the man. That's all right. You see what happened when he fell, when he, you know what I'm saying, when he, when he called himself, you know what I'm saying, falling for the trap of Judas. You know what I'm saying? Y'all thought y'all set him up. Y'all thought y'all brought him into the trap. Really, he did your butt a favor. And then what happened after that? The whole country went under. You know what I'm saying? You can do nothing but set yourself up. Keep going. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Uh huh. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Uh huh. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. The peace of God that does what? Passes all understanding. To keep your hearts and minds through the Messiah, Yahushua. That's Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, uh -huh. whatsoever things are honest, uh -huh. whatsoever things are just, uh -huh. whatsoever things are pure, uh -huh. whatsoever things are lovely, uh -huh. whatsoever things are of good report, mm -hmm. if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Ponder on those things. A lot of times our thoughts and our, our, our dealings go in and our ideas start to trouble us. If it be anything that's true and honest, ponder on those things. Think about those things. We can't devote so much of our time to, 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 to just evil and just thinking about stuff that just we know don't bring God no glory. Think about his word. Spend some more time in his word. That's what's true. That's what's honest. Right? Give me uh, First Thessalonians. We should be able to wrap up after this one. First Thessalonians chapter 5, give me verse 1. Just try to shoot through it real quick. It's First Thessalonians chapter 5, give me verse 1. Watch this. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It's verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. You have no need that I write unto you about the times and seasons. He's talking about the times and seasons at the end of the world. Watch this. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Uh huh. But when they shall say peace and safety... When they shall say what? Peace and safety. So we just heard about the peace that, that passes all understanding, right? Right? We find the peace of God, and it because, it's because we understand the word. But then when everybody else who does not understand the word say peace and safety, right? These are the people from far off, far from God. When they get to saying peace and safety, what happens? And sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Nobody escapes. We are going to be in peace. Right? And we're going to have all the understanding of the Most High God. But when the other folks, who we know don't have the understanding of the Most High God, start saying, you know what? Everything's going to be peaceful. We're all going to be safe. Just know that in a moment, all the old people are going to be in danger. It's important for us to understand how this thing works. We have to make peace with God, not try to proclaim peace on the people. We have to have peace in our souls, not try to have peace with the world. Right? When those, when those Hivites from Gibeon, when they came, they made peace with the people of God. They, could, they didn't go to another Canaanite nation and try to make peace. They knew who had the power and who was coming to give judgment. So they went to that group and they said, you know what? Here's peace. And in the, in the near future, it's going to be people that try to make peace with the people of God again. And they're going to be accepted. And there's going to be people who don't make peace with them. And they're going to make peace with the world. And they're going to say, oh, don't worry about it. We all safe. 
And in a moment's instant, y'all, y'all sure. The Messiah, he's gonna come back and he's gonna light these people butt up. All these people that and shot down our kids and walked in our darn houses and shot us. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna end up getting off with probation. Just watch, you know what I'm saying? You know, get off with probation. You know what I'm saying? All these people that did all these things to us, right? That locked us up in jail for, for fake DNA tests. You know what I'm saying? Talking about they saw our blood in there to find out years later they tested our blood wrong. We didn't go on crazy on, on life, death, death row. Spending life in jail and on death row. You know what I'm saying? We go crazy and they talking about they gonna let us out way after. Let us out 20, 30 years after. We old men. Just put us out in the street and don't give us no money. Don't give us nothing. They make a fool out of us. Alright? They make a fool out of us. Alright? They shoot us down every chance they darn get. And we look at it and we cry to these people. But you know what we don't cry to? You know what we don't try to do? We don't try to make peace with the people of God. We don't try to make peace with the people that's teaching the truth about the Most High God Word. We don't try to make peace with God. We don't try to teach our people who we are. We just sit here. And we keep trying the same thing. Black lives matter. Standing on top of darn freeways and blocking cars from passing. Okay, that's fine. I'm not saying don't do it. Do what you got to do. All I'm saying is let's get to the root of the problem. Let's not kill some time. It would be more, way more effective to stand in, the, and stand in the freeway and block the freeway if the people knew who they were. People knew where they were, then they can stand, they can hold up a sign that means something. We the Hebrews, we the people of God. Let's see how many people get mad at that. Let's see how many cameras cut off when they see that. Guarantee they ain't gonna put that on TV. Not yet, at least. Right? These are the things that we have to think about. The people have to know who they are. The people have to know who God is. Otherwise, we are killing time. Let's go ahead and pray out.